In these problems, we need to find the exact values of some trig functions, and not just the sine or the cosine. We've got things like the secant, the tangent, the cosecant. We're going to be using the unit circle uh, to find our exact values. And um, I've got this chart up here. So if you don't remember what the cosecant is or the tangent is, this will uh, give you those things in, in terms of sine or cosine. If you don't have something like this in your notes, you should definitely copy that down. This is going to come in handy. Let's look at this first one and see what we can do. It says, what is the secant of 315 degrees? Well, on the unit circle, we start here at 0, and we go around counterclockwise. So if we go 315 degrees, let's see, you could count all the way to 360 to get to the end, and then subtract 315, and you get 45. So I know this is going to be a 45-degree angle in here. And when we've looked at the unit circle before, you might know that these these 45 degree angles that we put in here on each of the, the four uh, sections of the circle, those are the pi over fours, okay? So this is pi over four, and of course we've got pi over two up at the top here. This is three pi over four, and pi of course is four pi over four, so this is five pi over four, and this is a three pi over two or six pi over four, and this is seven pi over 4, which is the same as 315 degrees, we've just found out. So what is our value here? Well, at all these pi over 4, the coordinates are some version of the square root of 2 over 2 with signs appropriate to the quadrant. So in this particular case, we're going to have the x value being positive, because we're out here on the x, and the y value being negative, because we're down here on the y. So this is the positive square root of 2 over 2, comma, the negative square root of 2 over 2. So that's our, our uh, coordinates for uh, 315 degrees or 7 pi over 4. We can use these to find the secant and the tangent because the x coordinate is the cosine and the y coordinate is the sine. So let's look at the secant of 315 degrees first. So the secant is 1 over the cosine. So this is going to be 1 over the x-coordinate, which is the square root of 2 over 2. And uh, you could use some, some fraction calculations here to, to figure out what this complex fraction is. But a shortcut here is just to know that 1 over a fraction is just the reciprocal of that fraction. So this should be 2 over the square root of 2. If you want to verify that, I'd suggest you multiply the top and the bottom of this fraction by 2. It'll achieve the same thing. I'll let you work on that on your own. So we've got 2 over the square root of 2, but we can't give this as our answer because we've got a radical in the denominator. So we need to rationalize the denominator first. So I'm going to multiply by the square root of 2 over the square root of 2. On the top, we get 2 times the square root of 2. On the bottom, we get 2. And then those 2's cancel. So our answer ends up being the square root of 2. So that is the secant of 315 degrees. Let's look at the tangent now. The tangent is the sine over the cosine. So that's going to be the negative square root of 2 over 2 over the square root of 2 over 2, sine over the cosine. Now, you could also do some, some fancy work here manipulating this complex fraction, but you should recognize right away that a thing over itself is just 1. So the square root of 2 over 2 over the square root of 2 over 2, that part equals 1. And then we've got a negative sign. So this all just equals negative 1. And there is the tangent of 315. All right, we can also get these measurements in, in radians. So here we've got the tangent of 2 pi and the cosecant of 2 pi. And where is 2 pi? I guess I didn't put this on here. 2 pi is all the way around the circle. So that's what you get right here. And the coordinates should be pretty obvious. That is 1, 0. That's the point at 2 pi. So when we uh, figure out the tangent, we're going to put the sine over the cosine. So this is 0 over 1, which is just 0. So the tangent of 2 pi is 0. How about the cosecant? The cosecant here is 1 over the sine. So this would be 1 over 0. And that's not going to fly. We can't. Uh, divide by 0. So what we actually have here is something that's undefined. There is no cosecant of 2 pi. 
All right. Lastly, we've got the cotangent of negative 5 pi over 3 and the secant of negative 5 pi over 3. When we have negative values, whether it's degrees or radians, all that means is we go in the opposite direction around the circle. So we start at 0, and instead of going counterclockwise, we go clockwise. And I think what I'm going to do to make this easier to count thirds, I'm going to put in the rest of the lines that we typically put in on our, our unit circle to show all of the special angles. So these are the sixths of pi. So I'm going to get the thirds of pi in there too. Let me draw these in, and then we'll label them. And we'll figure out what the coordinates are as we need them. OK. So I've divided this circle all up into sixths of pi. So starting uh, counting in the, in the positive direction, we've got pi over 6 to start with. Then we've got 2 pi over 6, which is pi over 3. Then we've got 3 pi over 6, which is pi over 2. And then 4 pi over 6, which is 2 pi over 3. And then 5 pi over 6. And then, of course, 6 pi over 6 is pi. So this is 7 pi over 6. 8 pi over 6, which is going to be 4 pi over 3. And 9 pi uh, over 6 is 3 pi over 2. And here, we're going to have um, 10 pi over uh, 6. So that is 5 pi over 3. And this is going to be 11 pi over 6. And then 12 pi over 6, we're back to 2 pi. All right, so we've got all of these on here. Now let's find negative 5 pi over 3. And in fact, what I'm going to do, I think, is mark the thirds so that they're easy to see. So uh, let's see. We've got pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3. And we've got, of course, pi, 3 thirds. And we've got 4 pi over 3. And we've got 5 pi over 3. And of course, 0. All right, so those are all the thirds of pi. So when I count by thirds, uh, I can just use these blue lines. So starting at 0 and going in the negative direction, this is 1 pi. Uh, sorry, 1 pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, 5 pi over 3. So this is negative 5 pi over 3, right there. So what are the coordinates? Well, you may remember that um, the coordinates are the uh, square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half in some combination. One of these is going to be the x, one of them is going to be the y, and they'll be positive or negative according to their qu their quadrants that they're in. Uh, we're here in this quadrant, so it looks like everything's going to be positive. But which comes first, the square root of 3 over 2 or the 1 half? Well, the 1 half is the smaller number. And that, for us, is the x. So you can see this, this point here is higher on the y than, than it is over on the x. So our coordinates are going to be 1 half and square root of 3 over 2. So that's our x and y. So this is our cosine, and this is our sine. Once we've got this, the rest of it's pretty easy. We want to figure out the cotangent of this. Cotangent is 1 over the tangent. The tangent is the sine over the cosine. 1 over that is just the reciprocal. So this is going to be the cosine over the sine. So 1 half over square root of 3 over 2. So how do we deal with that complex fraction? Well, we can multiply by 2 over 2 to begin with. What that's going to do is cancel that and that. Now I've got 1 over the square root of 3. And I just need to rationalize that denominator by multiplying by the square root of 3 over 3. On top here, I get the square root of 3. On the bottom, I get 3. So that is our cotangent. It's the square root of 3 over 3. Let's try the secant. So the secant is 1 over the cosine. Well, the cosine is 1 half. 1 over that is the reciprocal. So that's just going to equal 2. So that is the cotangent of negative 5 pi over 3 and the secant of negative 5 pi over 3. And that is how to determine the exact values of trig functions from the unit circle.